special brought to you by my unspillable coffee mug. So far, so good. In fact, I was just back there at the pilot in uh, Rice Hill, Oakland, and uh, just recreated the whole situation. I was even in the same parking spot where the uh, last spillage happened. And um, yeah, it's a good feeling. Feeling like I planned ahead. So with the price, I figured if this mug lasts two weeks, will it pay for itself? I think it's less than that. So I think it's like uh, 10 days or 11 days. It will have paid for itself. Anyway, just stopped back there, got a shower, uh, fresh cup of coffee, and a couple pieces of pizza, and got to enjoy most of that back there. And uh, I've got it down back there. I was a in and out of there in uh, 45 minutes. It's pretty good. Uh, I like stopping back there because of the way the parking lot is. You can get in and out on the other side of the building from the fuel island. Some of these places you have to go near the fuel island and you have to share the exit with the entrance, which is kind of weird. So basically you get blocked in. You guys have seen that before. I pointed that out. You get blocked in. You can be blocked in for a long time. Maybe hours. So let's talk about what's going on today. I left Woodland this morning, uh, no big hurry. I've got a 1 a.m. delivery in Portland. So as you guys know, it's like right in the middle of my sleep time. It's all right. I've been avoiding these loads for the last three months. Every time they've come up, I was like, uh, pass, what else you got? Uh, in this particular case, there was nothing else. So I took it, I'm not gonna complain much about it. Boss has been real good and accommodating to me. So, uh, you know, I took it. Somebody had to take it and there's no one else around. There's no other loads available. Looks like it fell to me. But it's alright. I'll take care of it. And, um, you know, that's the first time in uh, almost three months that I've had to make a middle of the night delivery. Early morning deliveries, it's okay with me. I get up early anyway. But 1 a.m., still kind of the middle of the night. <laughs> Problem is, there's not going to be, I'll be getting to Portland late tonight. There's not going to be anywhere to park when I get there. And then after I get unloaded, they estimate a little over two hours, maybe three hours max. There's not going to be anywhere to park. <laughs> so basically, I might be driving around in circles. I don't know. I'll figure something out. I'll let you guys know. And uh, But it's the first time in three months that I think I've had to make in the middle of the night at a specific time that's not bad you know my first year over the road 22 years ago oh my gosh, it's been so old. Uh, that was a regular thing switching or flip-flopping my sleep schedule three or four times a week that was a regular thing you know and uh, at least with this job it's not a regular thing and uh, I'm not real good in the old sleep schedule. I mean, I even find a local job, but uh, being out here, running the road like this, I like a regular sleep schedule. I like to know when I'm gonna be fresh, alert, and at my best for driving. So uh, I'll probably sleep in somewhere tomorrow until I feel rested enough to continue. And then tomorrow will probably be a short day. I'm not switching the nights. It's not gonna be like that. I'll be back on the normal schedule, but. Some trucking jobs, as I pointed out, that, that's part of it. That's a big part of it. It's a big reason why a lot of people throw in the towel and quit. You're being asked to flip-flop your sleep schedule three times in a week, maybe four times in a week. That, that wears people down fast. And, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. But, like I said, team player. We'll do it this time, no problem. We'll make it happen, Captain. So that's it, that's my update for today. Uh, got dusk setting in, probably get the, at least the running lights on. 